G'day YouTubers, I will preview this week's AFL games. Before I start, it will be appreciated if you can subscribe to my channel. Please help me get to 1000 subscribers. My summary of my round 6 tips are I selected the Saints to beat the Bulldogs wrong. In the second game, I selected the Crows to beat Essen again wrong. Third game, I tipped Collingwood to beat the Pal. Woohoo! Yeah! Fourth game, I tipped Cowan to beat the Giants. Yes, got that right. The fifth game, I tipped the Lions to beat Geelong. Gosh, that was wrong. The next game, I tipped Frio to beat West Coast. <laughs> yeah, that, I was incorrect for that as well. The next game, I tipped the Swans to beat Gold Coast. Woohoo! Yeah, that was easy to select. Final game, I tipped the Hawks to beat North Melbourne. Again, yes, I got that great. So, from the eight games, I only selected four correct, so that was only 50% pass rate. In total for 2024, I have selected 36 correct tips. The first game of the week is between Richmond and Melbourne at the MCG, which is a Anzac Eve game on Wednesday, 24th of April. There are some players in the mix for this week. For Richmond, the players in the mix are Naismith, Cumberland, and Mousemith. For the Demons, the players in the mix are Thomason and Fullerton. The Tigers will be missing the injured Bolter, Taranto, Prestier, Lynch, Ross, and Gipkus to an ACL knee injury, whereas the Demons will be missing Hunter, Bowie, McAdam, and Melsham to an ACL knee injury. Both teams had to buy last week, where the game will be won. In looking at the midfield position, um, this will be key to the match. So if you look at the Richmond right, midfield to what, Nankervis, Hopper, Ground, McIntosh, and Baker, against the gun midfield of Melbourne mids of Gorn in Mark with Oliver, Mighty Petruck and Sparrow. Looking at the matchups, Richmond's got good midfield in Hopper and Graham, whereas Melbourne's got elite in Oliver and Petraka, all Australians. So I expect this position to be vital and Richmond needs to break even this position as the Melbourne's midfield is super elite and if the D's win this midfield they're gonna have so many inside fifties and they're gonna have so much scoring opportunities and Richmond have got so many players injured. So therefore I tip the Demons to win this game, and I expect them to win easily by 30 plus points. The second game of the week is between Essen and Collingwood on Anzac Day. The players in the mix for the Bombers are Wright and Shield, whereas for the Magpies, the players that are in consideration are McRae, Dean and Markov. The players injured for the Bombers are Ridley and Zach Reed. For the Magpies, the players injured are Kruger, McStayton, ACL knee injury, and now the recently retired Murphy, who retired to concussion. Essen beat the Crows last week, and Collingwood beat Port Allen. So these two teams beat the two SA sides, where the game will be won. Looking at the Rap midfield setup, for the Bombers you have Goldstein in Rap with Martin, Caldwell, Mayer and Sensfield, compared to Collingwood's Rap midfield setup of Cameron Rap with Nick Dacos, Mitchell, Dugowit and Penelby. Just looking at the midfield, Collingwood has the Gun Elite players in Penelby and Dacos who are elite kickers, and then you've got the explosive inside outside midfield to Goey and Tom Mitchell thing to the outside players and Dacos and Penelby. Just analysing or looking at the two midfields, the Collingwood midfield is just a class above Essendon. Based on theirs, I tip Magpies to win based on the quality of the outfield of the Magpies and they're starting to hit their peak after six weeks of, of play catch up game in fitness wise. Now they'll reach peak thickness and they'll be at the best and they'll be making their move now and continue their winning streak from their win against Port Adelaide last week. The next game is between the Giants and Brisbane. The players in the mix for the Giants are Mike Mullen, Keith and Proust. For the Lions, the players in the mix are Lions, Garda and McKenna. The players injured for the Giants are Taylor, two concussion, Cummings and Coniglio. The players injured for Brisbane are Bailey, who got injured last week at Chong, and the ACL knee injuries to Coleman, Dode and Ashcroft. In looking at the right midfield setup of both teams, for the Giants, you have Bruce in Rupp, Tom Green, Kelly, Whitfield, and Callahan against Brisbane's McInerney in Rupp with McCluggage, Neil, Dunkley, and Barry. Based on theirs, looking at the midfields, both teams have good midfielders, and this will be a very interesting trio of players to watch. So be keen to watch and see who dominates. Based on the on paper, Brisbane has a good midfield, but the Giants has a good midfield unit when they play together. And based on the matchup of Tom Green against Barry, in terms of inside midfield or Dunkley, um, that's two hard 
out at players. And you got Kelly on the outside compared to McClarkage and the running machine of Midfield and the up and coming Cunningham. So based on this, it's going to be an interesting battle and who can get more inside 50s from the midfield will have a better likely chance of winning the game. Given that the game is played Giants home, I'm going to tip the Giants to win this in a close game. The next game is between the Power and St Kilda. The players in the mix for the Power are Evans, Williams, McKenzie and the former captain Boat. The players in the mix for the Saints are King, Garcia and Hasty. The players injured for the Power are Lord, Jackson and Horn Francis. First, the players injured for the Saints are Dow, Henry, Howard, Patton, Clark, Butler, Wood and the suspended Webster. In analyzing the rap midfield combination for Port and Saints, for the power you have solo in rap with Butters, Rosie, Wines and Drew, compared to Saints with Marshall in rap with Ross, Hill, Steele and Philippu. Just on paper, the power midfield looks more balanced. You got Butters and Rosie who can play inside and outside, Wines the midfield bull and also Drew, whereas the Saints is a patch midfield with players injured, and so E.G. Crouch is injured. So you've got young players like Philippou, and you've got the captain still and the outside class of Hill. But based on that, I expect the power to win easily. Their, their setup that they have and the, the quality of players that they have on the field and St. Kilda has too many injuries. And also, Port were pretty bad in the second half against Collingwood. They will have some retribution and unfortunately, St. Kilda will have to cop this against Port and Port are going to just play hard at home. Based on that, I'm going to tip the power to win this game. The next game is between North Melbourne and Adelaide in Tasmania. This is an interesting game. The players in the mix are Shield, Phillips and Bergman for the Kangaroos. And for the Crows, the players in the mix are Burgess and Pepper. The players injured for the Roos are Common Jones and Goda for all of this season and Lowe who did an ACL injury last year. For the pros, the players injured are Schoenberg, Butts, Sloan, Teofolk and the injury similar to Murray. North Melbourne are 0-6 and the Crows are 1-5 so both teams are doing bad this season. What will be the wider position? The game will be won in the right midfield. Looking at the North's right midfield set of Xeri in rough with Davis and Yaki, Steens, Scott and Phillips compared to the pros. Right midfield of Brian and Ruff, Dawson, Crouch, Laird and Barry. Just on paper, North have some young dog midfielders compared to Crows who have experienced players. Excuse me, Barry who's in this fourth season. But I still expect the Crows midfield to overrun the young North Melbourne midfield. And the forward line of Adelaide will be too strong for the young North Melbourne defenders. So based on that, I tip the Crows to win this game. The next game is Geelong and Cowan. What a beauty. The players in the mix for the Cats are Nevert and Rowan. The players in the mix for the Blues are Sinkota and Moy. The players injured for the Cats are Cam Guffrey and Chul. For the Blues, they will be missing Saad, Motlop, McGovern, Martin, Fogarty, Doherty and Savani. Looking at the right midfield set of both teams, for Geelong in the they have Dickhouse with Holmes, Henry, Duncan and Clark in the midfield compared to Cowan's De Kong in rock with Cripps, Kenley, Sarah and Hewitt. Looking on paper, you think the setup of Cowan is too strong. And that's not including Walsh on this list. If you add that, they've got more flexibility and more players to rotate. Fortunately, you still have Dangerfield playing, so it's going to be a very good midfield setup. So whoever can win this midfield will have a good chance in winning this game. Both teams have done very well this season. John has been undefeated. Count on, I don't know how they lost to a bottom five side in the Crows, and they've only had lost one game this season. So these are two top four sides playing against each other. This one's very hard to tip. I'm gonna pick Geelong to win this game. Just they're in good form and doing well, and Count do have some players injured. The next game is between the Fremantle and the Bulldogs. The players in the mix for the Dockers are Brody and Chapman. For the Bulldogs, their players in the mix are McNeil, Daniel, and Ugu Hagen. The players injured for the Dockers are Frederick, Cox. Amos to concussion last week, McDonald and Corbett. For the Bulldogs, the passages are Caulfield, Gardner and Smith. Looking at the right midfield setup, for Freeman, in rough you have Jackson, Young, Strong, Brayshaw and Johnson. Compared to the Bulldogs, rough midfield setup of English and right, Pontepedi, Trudor, Lever and McRae. On paper, 
both teams have good midfield, but the Bulldogs' midfield look a lot better. And given that the game is playing at Optus Stadium in Western Australia, and Fremantle were embarrassed in the Western Derby last week, I want to say Fremantle win this game. I expect retribution from Fremantle and them to play a lot better. I was at the game and Fremantle could see the first seven goals and they just look so uncompetitive. So I don't expect Fremantle to be super uncompetitive again after being very ordinary against the Eagles. So based on that, I'm going to tip Fremantle to win this game. But I wouldn't be surprised if the Bullocks win this game. The next game is between Gold Coast and West Coast. The players in the mix are Atkins and Davies for Gold Coast. And for West Coast, the players in consideration are Ryan and Reed. The players injured for Gold Coast are Farah, Roses Jr. and Weller. For the Eagles, the players that are injured are Allen, Flynn, Hewitt and Edwards. Last week, Gold Coast lost to Sydney and West Coast beat Fremantle. So this is the first time in a number of years West Coast has won back-to-back -back games and was inspired by the young gun in Harley Reid. Looking at the rap with the setup for both teams, for Gold Coast you have Ritz in Rock, Anderson, Rao, Hill and Flanders in midfield against West Coast with Williams in Rock and the midfielders of Kindy, Kelly, Sheed and Hunt. If you look at the West Coast midfield, some of these players are still young. Looking at the West Coast rap midfield, they are young, so you've got Williams and Gimby who have been on the list for less than four years, even though you have experienced Kelly and Shee. Whereas Gold Coast have got Gun Rock and Wits and young gun players in Anson, Rao and Miller. Looking at the midfield on paper, you think the Gold Coast midfield will dominate. And given that the game is played at home in the Gold Coast, I'm going to tip the Suns to beat West Coast. For the next game between Hawthorne and Sydney, the players in the mix are Butler, Stevenson, and Lewis. For the Swans, the players in the mix are Laddams, Francis, and Sheldrick. The players injured for the Hawks are Blunk, Grangan, Barras, Day, Wingard, Watson, and CJ. For the Swans, their players injured are Parker, Mills, and Rampy. Last week, Hawthorne got their first win by beating fairly settled dwellers in North Melbourne, and the Swans continue the merry ride and beat Gold Coast. Looking at the rugby midfield, for Hawthorne, you have Megan Rupp with Newcomb, Ward, Nash and McDonald as the midfields compared to Sydney's Ruck of Grundy who dominated last week in his turn game and midfields of Jordan, Rowbottom, Chad Warren and Golden. Just looking at on paper, the Hawks have a young Ruck midfield compared to season veterans for Sydney in Grundy and Jordan. So based on paper, I expect Sydney's midfield to dominate easily and based on all that I'm going to tip the Swans to win this and the Swans have only lost one game this season and it was I don't know how against Richmond. I don't expect Sydney to take Hawthorne lightly. Overall I'll tip the Swans to win this game. In summary my round 7 tips are Melbourne to beat Richmond on the Anzac Eve game, Congo to beat Essen on Anzac Day, the Giants to beat the Lions the power to easily beat the injured battered St Kilda team. This one was hard to predict, but just based on the midfield and the gross full line, I tipped the Crows to beat the Kangaroos. Top of the table clash. I tipped Geelong to beat the Blues. The Dockers to beat the Bulls. Gold Coast to beat West Coast. And Sydney to beat Hawthorne. That's the end. And thanks for watching. Please subscribe, hit the like button, and comment on my channel. Every subscriber will be appreciated.